X-rays, X-rays. Difficult, difficult. Forensics, forensics. Ah. As far as I can say, that's oral medicine and radiology. Coming to today's video, we'll be discussing about the various entities that we need to know about oral medicine and radiology to get by final year of BDS. Yes, it's that time of the year again when I resolve to make videos so that I don't forget anything and just blabber on for another six minutes to get to the point. I have my notepad in which all my points have been written. So the first thing you need to know in oral medicine and radiology as a department is it's the art and science of making radiographs and not just taking it, but making a good X-ray and to identify the problems or reading the X-ray. Okay. So now that we know that radiography is not just a part of medicine, but a skill that every dentist needs to develop. What are some of the common mistakes we make while taking X-rays? So one of the biggest mistakes we make is the moment the patient enters, we need to know whether the patient is anxious, whether he's ready to take um, a second off his tension and all he needs to sit down, relax for a while and cooperate for the X-ray. So that is the first thing. The second thing is the positioning of the patient. The patient must be seated in an upright position. Um, make him as comfortable as you can. In dentistry, most positions deals with maximal comfort for the operator and the patient. So now that that's established, uh, make sure your X-ray is placed on the correct side. Uh, you know, have to know about the tissue side and the um, X-ray side that needs to be placed away from the tube head and towards the patient's tissues. Make sure of that. And when you are sure of that, you need to position the X-ray head or the tube head well before you place the film into the patient's mouth. This is so that uh, whenever the X-rays are placed in the patient's mouth, they feel discomfort obvious discomfort. So to avoid that, if you have angulated your tube head well in advance, there's no problem of you waiting or wasting time and causing the patient more discomfort. So once that is in place, you place the X-ray film after the tube head has been angulated and you make a quick and easy X-ray based on the exposures that are required for particular teeth. For example, teeth which have thicker cortical plates are usually given a little bit more exposure for a little bit better resolution. Minor adjustments like that, you need to know the angulations. And now that you have that done, this second part is about the developing and fixing. So when you go to the X-ray room, you make sure that the red safety light is on. And when that is done, you switch off all the other light sources, check whether it's completely dark in the X-ray room or the dark room. And then you go and unpack your X-ray film. Now that you have unpacked your X-ray film, what you can do is you clip the X-ray to the holder or the hanger uh, right on the dot so that you don't create an artifact by placing it somewhere else. When that's done, you place it in the developer. Usually the norm is to use the time temperature method by which we know the temperature already. So we give it a, say 30 seconds to sit in the developer. Uh, so that the latent image gets uh, uh, com uh, completely fortified with the development. And then once that is done, you take the film out from the developer and you just rinse it with water to retard the developing process. And then once it's cleaned with the running water, you place it in the fixer solution. And that depends on the temperature of the fixer. Maybe it's 15 seconds, 20 seconds, how much ever it needs and where, how to check when the X-ray is done. So what you do is you place it against a light source. You see that there is no brownish or yellowish discoloration in the film. It should be clear. You see opacity or you see lucency, nothing else. And now that is done. Some of the errors that can happen in this whole procedure in brief is that you could either overexpose or you could underexpose, which will have an effect on the X-ray or the patient could move or the patient's fingers could come in between the film and the X-ray head. This can happen, happens quite often as well. And then the third one would be you drop your film in the developer or the fixer. Now, how to avoid this? How to avoid this is when you're clipping the film into the hanger, you just pull and make sure that it's snugly attached to the hanger. By doing this, you'll not go wrong in that particular procedure. 
and when uh, everything is done wash the film thoroughly and the hanger and keep it so that you don't cause inconvenience to the next person who is making an x-ray so once that is done you come out and the second part is reading an x-ray now that you've taken a successful x-ray or hopefully you have or hopefully you have not and you have asked your interns or your pgs to take it when they're very busy doing something else <sighs> just get emotional so what you do is you read the x-ray without the help first so what you do is you look at the opaque areas you see the lucent areas uh, to know this of course you need to know what is normal once you know what is normal you can start to notice abnormalities like the tooth in general has to be opaque and everything in the center in which the pulp is occupying the space should be loosened because it's softer in nature and less calcified or not calcified so the important thing you need to notice is the edges of the teeth usually when there's jagging edges or there's a little uh, loss of the margins it usually means that there's a break either in the lamina dura or the periodontal ligament has either expanded or the space has reduced. It can be any of these. Or in severe cases, it could also be resorption of the tooth. So this you need to know when there's a lucency. When there's an opacity, it's usually a calcification. An opacity in the apex could be an osteitis. It could be a condensing osteitis. A lucency in the periapical area could be an abscess, cyst, a granuloma. Plenty of diagnoses are there which I'll make a video about in a separate one. Uh, I'll also get to know better when I study to let you know better. So the th fourth part of this uh, video is dealing with exams. Now exams primarily deal with testing your skills of taking an x-ray and reading what it is about. So what you need to know is when you have an x-ray in hand, think of it not as your single most opportunity to excel in the exam, but Think of it as an objective way and you're really curious to learn about what is happening with the patient's oral cavity or with that particular tooth and relax first, take deep breaths and realize that you, if you screw this up, you are probably screwed, but still relax, take another deep breath, inhale the seriousness, inhale the developer solution, don't inhale the developer solution, actually you could, maybe you couldn't. I'll check and let you know in the description down below. Keep checking that. Um, so you uh, get done with all that. And then you make a good x-ray. And make sure that when you're taking the x-ray, your nervousness isn't seen in the, with the patient. Because when he gets to know, he gets nervous. And there are higher chances of you making a mistake. Now the third part. Now oral medicine and radiology. What kind of real world experience does this give you? A patient comes to you or he calls you and describes a type of pain that is happening with his uh, lower left back tooth or whatever it is. With good knowledge of oral medicine and radiology, you could actually give him a clinical diagnosis based on what he's saying. Of course, it needs more physical examination like percussion, palpation, you need inspection, you need visual uh, uh, data for all these. But you can form in your head a diagnosis and this is the mainstay of whole medicine and radiology. Now, where do you study medicine from? Actually, you don't study medicine. You incorporate the knowledge that is presented by every other department and try to understand medicine. This is how it is. It's not that you study Burkitt's in uh, two months before the exams and you're really good. It doesn't work like that. If you're good in oral path in your third year, you'll probably be great at oral medicine as well because all the diagnostics, uh, diagnostics point of view and all the study of the diseases are uh, very similar to what it is in oral pathology. A good uh, book for oral pathology is of course the Schaefer's, which is like the gold standard book. There's Neville. There are other uh, multitude of uh, oral path books. But get to know your subjects from before as well. And then you could read uh, pulpal and periapical lesions from Grossman. You could read radiology from a good book like uh, uh, White and Farrow is a good book. And coming to medicine, medicine is a culmination. So when in doubt, there's no shame in going back to Schaefer's and reading your third year books. Uh, don't just stick to Burkett's or uh, uh, Medicine of Oral Medicine and Radiology with Dr. Ravi Kiran Ongar and Dr. Praveen BN. Uh, these books are really great. And you need to study them um, interchangeably. 
there are some things that are good in buckets like uh, red and white lesions are really good in buckets um uh, certain types of uh, uh, um descriptions for tumors are good in buckets and uh, some others are good in uh, um uh, textbook of oral medicine radiology uh, by uh, ravi kiran ongol so what is good in that is uh, uh, these uh, ulcerator vesicular bullus these are really good in the second one um so you need to, and uh, i can't say that it's good because it was good for me and you need to realize which is good for you uh, so you do that and the third thing is about question banks and jyotsna rao now i won't be a really bland person and tell you not to read from any of these i understand you are at the end of the year you are in a hurry you need to learn as much as you can you need to be as fast as you can you need to do all that crazy things it's all good but when you are reading these don't forget to um what is it called cross check these things with the textbook because uh, some things might be wrong it's just a review or a question bank and uh, don't uh, uh, stop at the answers that they give you try to find out a little more than at least what is given in those books because knowledge is knowledge doesn't matter which book it comes from anything you read from a leaflet is also still knowledge and then what are the benefits of going through all this hard work this crazy toil you know finally of oral medicine oral path and all this you need to understand that even if you are planning to do your mds neat has a has a real big focus in mds on oral path and oral medicine questions which will literally be shot at you in lightning speed and uh, you need to have that understanding of how things are working and this is your chance to make sure that you do well now you do well in the future and you do well ever because oral medicine and radiology is very very important um uh, so that was the video for today guys like share and subscribe hope to see you in the next video